Hello and welcome back to the channel. In the previous video I showed you how to do antenna sensitivity and antenna power measurements with the CMW500 wireless call box in conductive mode. Meaning that we were measuring the power going from the TELID LTE modem into the wire without using any antennas. In this video I am going to actually attach antennas to it and measure them as well. But before I do that, let's just review the theory so that you can understand what we are actually doing. So, in one of my previous videos, I explained uh, the tests that we need to do for radio modules, and typically they include what's called total radiated power. So when we look at the total radiated power, we first need to understand the concept of effective isotropic radiated power, or in other words called EIRP. So EIRP really is just a transmit power minus cable losses plus antenna gain. And that is very simple and straightforward because isotropic antennas are supposed to radiate equal amount of power in absolutely all directions. So if you know one of those directions, you know all of them. Unfortunately, in reality, isotropic antennas don't exist at all, not even close. The real antennas that are used in the market for LTE or anything they always have radiation patterns. And radiation patterns are not equal in all directions. If you look at them, you will clearly see that uh, they're a bit stronger on sides and uh, sometimes there's nothing on the back and uh, so on and so forth. It depends on the design of the antenna that you get a specific radiation power. And um, that basically is part of your um, design selection, if you like. So if you wanted to measure a total radiated power, you cannot just sum X amount of EIRPs um, without estimating them uh, first hand. So what we typically do for TRP estimation is that we define N and M amount of positions in a spherical coordinate, and then we measure uh, basically vertical and horizontal polarized component of electromagnetic wave in those positions. And you can see the formula here that neatly shows you how it's done. So in other words, TRP is just a summation of all the EIRP values in a spherical coordinate. And as I briefly mentioned, it's very important to measure both horizontal and vertical polarization power because at each spherical point in space, they will be different. And that is unless you're using a circularly polarized antenna for measurement, which can capture both at the same time. So what really tends to happen is that anechoic chambers will have a specific antenna ring, like the one shown on this picture, which is made by a company called MVG. And this antenna rig will have circularly polarized antennas arranged in a sphere around the device under test. And this is effectively what we call over-the-air test chamber. So if uh, this uh, test chamber has this kind of antenna rig, then this is suitable for 4G and 5G antenna tests. And I also talked about isotropic sensitivity, and isotropic sensitivity is effectively just signal-to-noise ratio. So it is how much noise your antenna is uh, capturing from nearby and what is the level. So this is what uh, isotropic sensitivity stands for. And uh, we also have total isotropic sensitivity, which is measured in exactly the same way as TRP. So it's a uh, an average of uh, isotropic sensitivity values in a spherical coordinate. So, as you can probably guess from this presentation, this kind of a setup with MVG antenna rig is typically very, very expensive. And not many locations in the world actually have those kind of setups. 
So what I'm going to show you in this video is how we can estimate TRP and TIS based on limited amount of uh, uh, spherical coordinates. And we're gonna do this measurement in uh, the local chamber I've got here at the University of Surrey, uh, which is by no means um, suitable for proper qualification and certification testing, but it will give me an approximate uh, number that I can then um, assume either adequate or inadequate, and then I will either proceed with a design or I choose a different path. Alternatively, if you really don't have any access to any quirk chamber, I think you can measure that in a quiet room as well, but you just have to know exactly uh, where your spectrum is, and then uh, basically you can tell that um, this measurement is adequate or inadequate uh, by the results. The only thing you have to bear in mind is that during OTA tests, the uh, modem that you're going to use will transmit more power than it's supposed to in, during its normal operation and this can easily disrupt nearby devices. So this is another reason why testing over the air uh, TRP and TIS is recommended to do that inside an anechoic chamber. So this is a flexible LT antenna 1 and it's a flexible LT antenna 2. And one is going to be used for main signal and the other is going to be used as a diversity. And the difference between them is that unlike MIMO, this simply means that the main antenna will be used as much as possible until it drops out. And then the device will switch to diversity antenna. So there's not going to be any gain summation happening here uh, or any kind of uh, coding uh, gains because this is not a MIMO. This is just a main and a diversity antennas. On the other hand, if we did have a MIMO setup, that would affect the total radiated power as well. So you would slightly change the formulas that you use depending whether it's um, a MIMO or not a MIMO. Anyway, uh, in this case, this is not a MIMO. So we're going to use the standard EIRP calculation. I have also printed another piece of uh, plastic where I go and position the antennas. And the rule of thumb actually is that when you're positioning antennas, uh, you should maintain a distance of um, half a wavelength between them. And that is done so that there is a minimized amount of mutual coupling between antennas. So if we consider 700 megahertz as uh, the lambda, then we're going to get wavelengths of um, half a meter almost. So that means that the wavelength is going to be not 0.42 meter, or in other words, uh, 40 centimeters, and divided by two means 20 centimeters. So ideally I should space my antennas about that much apart. But what also counts is the rotation of those antennas. So instead of positioning them uh, equally, I could also rotate them so that one antenna is positioned something like this and the other antenna is positioned something like this and in that case your separation between uh, two identical parts of antenna are going to be much larger and it also maximizes your chances of picking up the signal because all of those antennas are polarization sensitive therefore they will react differently depending on what angle the wave is coming from so let's position the antenna one and now I am ready to attach those antennas so it doesn't really matter which antenna is main and which is um, diversity so I'm just going to attach whichever is the closest to it so now you can see that both antennas are firmly plugged in and not going anywhere we do have the Roland Schwartz SIM card still inside the device and now I can uh, close the lid 
and we can now go into the anechoic chamber and do the measurement. So this is now measuring the uh, transmit power and the X direction. All the equipment on this table is switched off, so it's not going to affect the measurement. So what's happening now is that instead of using the uh, conducted uh, wire, I am now transmitting a signal from the antenna and receiving it into the CMW500. And uh, you can see the uh, average and uh, uh, maximum minimum TRP values on the screen as displayed. In the meantime, I still have the RF cable plugged in into the CMW500 in the exact same port so that it can uh, transmit and receive signals because for TRP it needs to receive and for TIS it needs to transmit, right? So what's gonna happen now is that I'm gonna start populating the Excel spreadsheet with TIS and TRP values for the LTE band 3. And I'm going to do that in 30 degree steps. So this is basically the closest approximation we're gonna get from this setup. And yet still it's going to take quite a long time to do because we have to take a measurement in X, Y, Z axis as well as do it in both vertical and horizontal orientation. So basically as I perform uh, this measurement I am now going to put it inside the table. So for example in this case the result is going to be 82 dBm. And as you can see I've been able to play a little bit more with this uh, screen so I can now display both uh, bit error rate and uh, TIS value on the same screen. So this uh, is the value I'm going to put in this spreadsheet. So then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to record the transmit power at this angle as well and this is going to be the EIRP value. Um, so in this case this uh, is 21.25 dBm, so I'm going to put it into the Excel spreadsheet and um, this is uh, 21.25, actually that's fine. The dBm of course it goes with minus, so it's uh, minus 82 dBm. So then I'm going to simply carry on repeating those steps and get the other values for Y orientation. So now I've got all the values for uh, Y axis and we can um, actually change the orientation and measure it in x-axis instead and then we're gonna repeat it and do it again for the z-axis. And now we're measuring transmit power in the x-orientation. So I'm going to populate the uh, Excel figures accordingly. So now we've completed the x-axis and finally we only have to do the z-axis. And finally I'm doing the third orientation scan. So this is actually going to be y orientation. And the first orientation we did was z orientation. Then the second orientation was um, x, I believe. So this is y and the previous one is x. So now that we have populated the entire table, we have got more or less um, a spherical estimate of all the values uh, from uh, this device in 30 degree steps. So what happens next is that we need to actually get the TRP value out of it and the method I'm going to use is going to be the 5GNR method um, so I'm going to show you what it means. So first of all, we, in, before we do any uh, calculation, we have to convert those uh, 
uh, units from dBm into milliwatts and that would make them linear rather than logarithmic. So I'm going to add another column and just call it vertical milliwatt and then we're also going to have horizontal milliwatt. Right, so now the formula is going to be 10 to the power of and in the brackets the TRP value excuse me and in the brackets EIRP value at uh, this table rotation divided over 10 So then, what we're going to do is we're going to sum them up and take the average of this value. Finally, I'm going to convert it back into dBm's and this is going to be my TRP for Y orientation. So to do that, I'm going to use a formula 10 times log 10 and the value of this um, summation. And basically, I have received the average TRP value 21.5 dBm, which is really, really good. So the next step is obviously to do the same for the other columns. And the other orientations. So for the x axis, we have now obtained 18.6 dBm. And for the z axis, I have obtained 18.9 dBm, very close to 19 dBm. So now we are ready to give the final answer and uh, basically average those three values and this is it so 19.7 dBm is the total radiated power in this scenario so this is it and uh, 19.7 dBm is the final answer for total radiated power estimate in the band 3. So then you may also want to do that for all the other bands and as you probably can see it's a very time consuming work to do all of that so you may want to limit yourself to just checking one or two bands of the most interest depending on how much work you want to do. And then you would also repeat the same process to get the TIS number. So the purpose of this video was to give you an insight into how does TRP and TIS is measured in the real world and this little trick you can do to estimate it uh, by yourself but of course the biggest compromise is the time that you spend doing it. And as you can see, this is quite a lengthy process, unfortunately. That's it for this series of videos about TRP and TRS measurements. Uh, please drop any comments if uh, you want me to cover any more antenna topics or anything specific you have in mind that you may not know much about and you would like me to talk about. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video really soon.